evening and welcome to SAT TV's Channel 9 Evening News. I am Marcia White. And I am Desmond Joseph. We are your presenters for the evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Among the major developments, Caribbean athletes make their mark on the Olympic stage. Hurricane warning issued for Belize as Ernesto approaches. U.S. held responsible for killings of hostages. And in sports, more peers advance to domino final. Details of these and other stories after the break. SAT Telecommunications Limited is the official rights holder and broadcaster of the 2012 London Olympic Games. With the Aid Bank's specially designed mortgage loan at an interest rate of only 5% on the reducing balance, you'll soon be purchasing that lot of land or moving into a real home with one year's grace period on the principal repayment. For more information, call 448-2853 or visit us in Goodwill or online at www.aidbank.com. Limited funds available, special conditions apply. Aid Bank, 40 years of giving credit for economic development. Thank you for staying with us. Now for the details of the news. Canfield welcomes soon-to-be brides, bridesmaids, and ladies-in-waiting in their first-ever bridal fair. Women from all over the island turn out in large numbers to get a glimpse of the latest in bridal wear on Sunday, August 5th in Shed 2. The wedding and honeymoon market has been identified as one of Dominica's niche markets, which could contribute significantly to the growth of our visitor arrivals and more importantly, our visitor expenditure, how much the visitor actually spends on the island because it is in generating revenue that we can make money from the business. Dominica is very unique and offers our visitors a unique Caribbean experience. And that's why you, you were not wrong when you said, I am Dominica, because you don't have to be Dominican to be Dominica. Dominica is a philosophy, it's an experience, it's an idea. And anybody around the world, our visitors who come to Dominica, having experienced Dominica, can in fact say, I am Dominican. That's Mr. Douglas believes it is an experience that will have a huge impact on the tourists and will have them visiting Dominica again and again. And what we are selling, what we are offering to our visitors as stakeholders, especially in the tourism industry, is an experience. So when one comes to Dominica, particularly for a first time, they will go away having experienced Dominica in a way that they cannot experience anything else um, anywhere else in the world. So we must remember that. So when we say, I am Dominica, it's not just about being Dominican, but it's about experiencing all that is Dominica. So you were quite right when you said, I am Dominica, even if you are from St. Lucia or from anywhere else um, on the face of the earth. Minister for Gender Affairs, Mrs. Gloria Schillingford says, hoteliers and other service providers should not take things for granted. You should not take things for granted. If your service is not optimal, there is always St. Lucia. True. Right next door, which is already doing very well in the destination wedding business. Also, in order for growth to take place, you must encourage feedback and respond constructively to criticism. For those are the things which point out your weaknesses and the areas which call for improvement. Head of Product Development, Ms. Kathleen Coffey, is quite pleased from Discover Dominica's promotion of this event and she commends the work ethic of the organizers. And I mean, this was a very good initiative and I think it's very timely considering the fact that we are now trying, you know, to develop this niche market. This niche market we think is very significant to Dominica's foreign exchange earnings and to have this type of fear today, it just, you know, emphasize the need to get this done. Based on our research that we've done, we realize this is a billion dollar industry and Dominica needs to get, you know, to benefit, to get a piece from this cake. We have all the system. Coffee provides tips on locations in Dominica where she thinks it's appropriate to have your dream wedding. Persons are looking to have destination wedding, as it's called, having their wedding done in a different location, somewhere different. And Dominica, as we know, it's different. It's even different from the sister islands. The other islands have weddings on the beach, they're white sand beaches. But Dominica, we know we have natural beauty. Persons can get married on the waterfall, on our black sand beach that we are also proud of. The various locations in terms of the cabrits, or the, as a national park. 
so we have the we have the strength. We have we have all that is going that is going for us to get a taste of this cake, as I said, and just having this type of event brings together all the various service providers, persons that we are not even aware into this business, to come here and to showcase what it is that they offer, whether it is wedding um, cakes, wedding cakes, whether it's the rental of wedding gowns, and etc. But it's really, really timely, and I'm very happy that um, the organization was able to take this initiative. That was Kathleen Cuffey from the DDA. In Olympic news, Dominicans Luan Gabriel produced a personal best of 24.12 seconds in the 200 meter heats but failed to qualify for the final despite that personal milestone when she ran on Saturday, August 4th at the London 2012 Olympics. Media coordinator representing Dominica at the Games, Mr. Darwin Telemach says despite this, the 16-year-old Dominican athlete did perform well, seeing she was not ready for competition at this level as yet. The intention of putting Luan Gabriel in the race and in the Olympics was clearly according to President Felix Wilson and General Secretary Thomas Dorsett, along with Coach Joel Hamilton, it was clearly to give her the exposure and the experience of being a part of an Olympic Olympic Games. Gabriel, who suited up in lane three next to Shelly and Fraser, 16 years old, and from the moment that they left the block, it was clear that her inexperience was not going to be enough to pull through to move beyond the first round. Gabriel ran 24.12 seconds coming in in the ninth position of the nine athletes in that heat and clearly not enough, not close enough to push her through to the next round. Mr. Telemark pointed out that after the race, Ms. Gabriel indicated to him that she was indeed very excited that she got the chance to perform at the Olympics and is happy that she tried her best. She said that this opportunity gave her the chance to know what to expect for the next Olympics to be held in Brazil. So she will not be nervous when in front of such a large crowd. To the critics who are of the view that Ms. Gabriel should not have participated, Mr. Telemark had this to say. Anyone who believes that Luan should not have run needs to speak to Luan. You, you, you would need to listen to a young athlete feel so ecstatic, so happy, so pleased that she could have been out there, been a part of something great. I don't think anyone can question the fact that the expectations from a management team was that she should do her best. They did not pressure her to try to say you needed to win or needed to advance. They simply asked her to do her personal best. Of course, they, 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 everyone would like to look out for a 16-year-old. However, if she is responding the way she is now, having ran, I don't think there's any question in my mind that the best thing that was done for Luan Gabriel was to bring her to London, let her run, 27-year-old Erickson Icho, the other Dominican participating in the Games, also failed to secure a semi-final spot in the men's 400 meter as he placed fifth in Heat 7 with a time of 46 and 5 seconds. He's very disappointed. I think he was expecting to go through to the second round. Um, the, 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 the truth is, at 46, Ito has to really put some work in because the, the top four athletes, in the men's 400 meters were all from the Caribbean. Uh, you have Santo Domingo with Santos, you have uh, Trinidad with Law, Law, Gordon, sorry. You have Kirani teams from Grenada. And I think the Bahamas Pinda came in fourth. All these men are running under 45. He says with a lot of hard work and intense training, he believes that Mr. Ito can shave off from this time to be a top contender. First of all, Ito was disappointed. Clearly, he knew he needed to deliver. He wants to deliver. He had tears in his eyes. He stood there. You felt for him. You know, I, I had to put my arms around him and console him a bit. But he wants to deliver for Dominica. He feels that Dominica has done a lot for him. Feels that Dominica has been good to him, and he wants to deliver. That can also be a negative because if you're continuing to think that you have to do this and you're not just being natural and doing your game, it 
can work against you. So maybe he too has to release the pressure from himself and really just go out and conduct himself in a way that would allow him to do the best that he can. That being said, after the race, he was very disappointed. Despite the results, the Dominican population is certainly proud of the efforts of the two athletes at the Games. Other Caribbean athletes are also making their mark on the Olympic stage. Grenadian athlete captures gold in the London Olympics Monday night. 19-year-old Karani James performed his personal best in the 400-meter race in an impressive 43.94 seconds at the Olympic Stadium. James has become the eighth fastest man in history over one lap and secured the title in an event that is traditionally won by the Americans. James is the first non-American to complete the race in less than 44 seconds. Felix Sanchez of the Dominican Republic placed second, and Trinidad and Tobago's Lalon Gordon wins the bronze medal, showing the strong presence of Caribbean athletes. The teenage world champion brings Grenada its first gold medal, and to commemorate his victory, the island has named a street after him in the capital city of St. George. The government of Grenada has officially declared today a holiday to celebrate this feat. In other news, Jamaican runner Usain Bolt surpassed expectations when he beat his own Olympic title in the men's 100 meter final. The Olympic Stadium roared with 80,000 cheers as Bolt raced with a record of 9.63 seconds as he crossed the finish line to a gold victory. Over 20 million people watched Bolt's historic victory and it's one of this year's Olympic highlights. Dominica has done it again walking away with the Miss J.C. Scrum in Antigua. On Friday, July 3rd, Miss Nadira Lando, who is currently Miss Dominica and Miss Caribbean World, earned yet another title when she won the Miss J.C. Scrum. Miss Lando captured the Miss Photogenic category and also won the interview segment which ultimately determined the winner. Lando won Best Model and Skills in the Evening Wear segment in a, re in a red dress with a dovetail flawed skirt and a translucent bodice decorated with sequins and rhinestones. First runner-up was Miss St. Kitts and Miss St. Lucia walked away with the second runner-up position. Miss St. Lucia walked away with the Best Swimwear and Best Talent performance. Congratulations again to Miss Nadira Lando for representing Dominica once again. In local news, two fishermen still have not been found after being lost at sea from Wednesday, August 1, 2012. Police Public Relations Officer Inspector John Carbon has more on this story. The police is investigating a report where two men of Point Michel are missing. It was reported that Elisha Hill and Dylan Hippolyte, both of Point Michel, went on a fishing expedition about 10 p.m on 1st August 2012 and have not yet returned since. The men left on a 15 feet open keel boat powered by a 40 horse power Yahama outboard motor. The Coast Guard went into search on the men on Wednesday but due to the passing of the tropical storm Ernesto, the search had to be abandoned but when continued on Friday August 3rd, it proved futile. However, the search has been called off. One local business owner is calling on corporate citizens to make more effort in sponsoring sporting events. Mr. Shamali St. Rose, who is the co-owner of Mirror's Cocktail Bar in Goodwill, who organized a six-on-six -six small goal competition, says business owners need to do all they can to empower the youth through sporting events, which their sponsorship is vital. The money really comes not from our pocket, to be honest with you. Through the bar, the nearest cocktail bar, which is in Gabriel right there. And we just trying something as youth sound. So the sponsors come along, whether it's digital, whether it's lime, it doesn't really matter. Whether it's Kubul, whether it's Kari, whatever sponsors, it will be better for us. He says though the competition was successful this year, if more sponsors came on board, it could have been much better. He added there is still time as they are hoping to host more events such as this one later this year and has future plans to make the Mirrors Cocktail Bar 6 on 6 Small Goal Competition an annual event from 2013. 
This event, first of all, was um, inspired for Mongo Freeman, who passed away. And as the youths around, we just decided to continue it. So, you know, it's a building process. Mm -hmm. So, um, hopefully, Sponsor will come aboard in the future so it could be bigger and better. But for now, we're just trying. Um, main sponsors is Mira's Cocktail Bar. Um, that's the second time we're trying it. We tried it last year, this year. Not too bad, but hopefully sponsors will come along and the good community will come together with us and make it a little better. Mr. St. Rose is urging the corporate citizens to please take them serious when they send proposals out for sponsorship of such events, which keeps the youth busy in positive activities. The competition was held on Saturday, August 4th and went on to Sunday, August 5th where 12 teams participated all in the hope of winning the grand cash prize of $3,000. Captain of the winning team, Blood and Blood Out from Goodwill, Mr. Ned Abraham says he is overjoyed that they won the event. We always had the full confidence that we would have come down and win the competition this afternoon because we had the players, we had the defense, and we had the set place to make it to the end. And we came here and we really present display today there, so that's why we are the winners and it wasn't no surprise to us as the players because we are the others. So I say give thanks to the support the people gave around us today there and it was a nice outcome of the game and we're looking forward to having another session like that anytime soon. So we're asking the outside to play a part in this event next time coming soon. The excited captain says their defense was very strong, so all they had to do was come with a strong offense, which is what led them winning the competition. He added that such events are necessary since it helps keep the youth engaged in something that they love to do, as the sport of football is very important to them. We have a lot of young men in good will and they just relax, we like you know, have a club. You know, and take part in a lot of events, which of course it could be the part of the FA. But we have the footballers, we just have no, we just don't have a sponsor, so a sponsor to help us to further the talent we have. So we are saying out there, if anybody could help us to assist us to get a sponsor, we could help the use of goodwill because I made my time already, I just a supporting player on the team. You know, so I'd like to see we could get a sponsor and then we could further the future of the young players that we have here right now. The competition, which took place at the Lindo Park Plain Field in Goodwill, received a lot of support from residents of Goodwill and others who were present. The winner of last year's competition was God Gives, God Takes. Many persons flocked to the village of Cochrane on Sunday, August 5th, as this was the place to be for the ninth edition of the National Rabbit Festival. The event was blessed with sunny weather, although there were some scattered showers at certain points. Nevertheless, it was an event to remember. Patrons gathered at the Cochrane playing field where they got the chance to purchase rabbits while including in numerous rabbit dishes. A first time participant of the rabbit festival, Miss Roseanne Massicott says that she was very much impressed with what she saw. The different kinds of rabbits are tasting good. There is stew rabbit, popcorn, um, sweet and sour, baked, all different sorts in which you can think of. It's very tasty. The people serving it, selling it, they are very friendly. Miss Massicott, who is from the village of Wesley, says she certainly enjoyed this year's dry condition for a number of years. Rabbit Festival has always rained out. She said it is not the first time eating rabbit meat, rather the first time eating it in many different flavors and seasoning. For those who did not attend the Rabbit Fest or those who could not attend it, those who can, are advising them for the next coming years that they, are, that they attend the Rabbit Festival and those who cannot attend the Rabbit Festival, please get somebody to bring some of the good rabbit meats for you all. Miss Patricia Murphy from the village of Cochrane, who had a tent selling rabbit meat, says, in terms of the turnout, it seems in her opinion the years of rain attracted a lot more patrons. Miss Matthew pointed out that the sweet and sour and the jackrabbit were the two main dishes which the patrons requested in the high quantities after tasting. She went into detail on the various rabbit dishes she had prepared. I have 
sweet and sour, I have um, jerk, I have stew, I have bake, I had rabbit on wine, but it's finished. I had I have rabbit rolls and rabbit water, rabbit soup, and kish kebab. Yes, and barbecue rabbits. Miss Matthew has been a vendor since year one says it seems the rain is actually showers of blessings as the dry weather presented somewhat of a decline in numbers of persons attending the festival and regards 2011 is the best year for her. Honor Melvinas Miss Melvina Boyer, another first timer to the Rabbit Festival, who also fell in love with the sweet and sour rabbit says she really enjoyed herself and will be there next year. What I like most of all, the people in Cockburn come together and they make the rabbit face of it is everybody has something to do and they patronize well. And man is really nice and I'm telling my Dominicans to come out in more large numbers. And I don't know if it's because it's my first time rain not, rain not falling as much as it is fall. Because usually rabbit face always have rain. And I tell you, I just lost my business place. I go down straight down to Rabbit Fest and I bring up a friends with me and I tell you, it's well organized and this is how, that's the way that Dominica should come together and really organize things. But this thing really organized and I like that. And I'm planning to do a ball of fest soon because what I see, it just amazed me. Miss Boy pointed out the presentation was very inviting and gave her the taste to eat the food. The business owner says that anyone who missed this year's Rabbit Festival should make every attempt to attend this to attend the 2013 fest, especially as there is so much to offer. From agriculture to religion, education to culture, Maho held their first annual award ceremony for persons in these respective fields. The Awards and Recognition Committee of the Maho Reunion honored and celebrated the efforts of leaders who contributed to the advancement of their community. Awardees consisted of five individuals, namely Cletus 18, Rana Jean Baptiste, Annette Bates, Heska Charter, and Nathalie Sampson. Nathalie Sampson says the group devised eight categories of various disciplines, and the honorees are celebrated members of their village who have made a tremendous impact over the years. We met several times to go over the list over and over again and to ensure that we had the right mix of persons to be awarded this evening. The area selected for awards, as you can see on your program, we have to recognize persons in the sports, culture, youth involvement, education, community development. The honorees were awarded with plaques and certificates of recognition. Honorable Rayburn Blackmore, parliamentary representative, says if granted the opportunity to help someone, we should willingly do so. Otherwise, our presence on earth is useless. We live in a society that's endlessly selfish that we do not take time out to think of persons who are less fortunate than ourselves. And I think if you look at us, or, or being on this earth as something temporary, but while we're there, we have to make the place a better place for our children and those after us to follow. That's the only way we can really appreciate what we do on earth, is to leave a legacy of prosperity, hope, for people to follow us. Our presence on earth will be almost useless if we don't build a strong foundation that's the only way our children and our children and children can, can inherit structures that are very strong. He also states that we can have the best of roads and physical structures, but we may never get to the next level if our general disposition is distorted. Our attitude to work, our attitude to each other. There has to be not only a transformation in the physical infrastructure, but there has to be a transformation in our human being, our human self. My dear friends, social transformation, that is so important for advancement. Because the parliamentary representative mentioned that too often we place emphasis on the negatives, but if we look within ourselves, there is endless positivity. Let me give you the commitment and the assurance as a humble servant that I will continue to, re to represent your interests every day, every week, every month, and every year. And those of you who's gonna, who are going to return next year in Dominica and in Mao, 
you shall see, if I'm still alive, that a total transformation in Mao, because we're going to actually start the construction of all river walls, including Picati, where I'm from, Campbell Road. The parliamentary representative presented plaques to deserving awardees. Some of the awardees were Debbie Jacobs and Mark Henry in agriculture, Emmanuel Luke in Bell's Combo in culture, among others. A computer was also donated to the Maho Primary School. On Saturday, August 4th, the Dominica Football Association, DFA, held a prize giving and award ceremony. As usual, it is always an honor and privilege to address members of the football family. I am particularly heartened on this occasion since we are here to celebrate success and to recognize the achievement of our many talented individuals, clubs and teams. Let me say a special thank you to all those who worked tirelessly in one way or the other in ensuring that the 2011-2012 football season was a success. Despite some of the challenges that we faced, the zeal of commitment shown by all is a clear indication that we can achieve and reap success if we are so determined. Mr. Etienne says words cannot express his gratitude towards the main sponsor, Lime. Let me on your behalf say a big thank you to the Premier League sponsor, Lime, for their support. The support that Lime has given has gone a long way in ensuring that we stage a successful Premier League. Thank you, Lime, as we look forward to your continued success. Heartfelt thanks must also be extended to Domlek for their sponsorship of the women's competition. We have seen what our women can do, and this is reassuring. It certainly is money well spent. He congratulated all who received the awards and believes that this is a testimony of the hard work they have put into their football games and practices. Let me encourage you at this point in time to work even harder at your game. Redouble your efforts to all what is necessary to ensure that you are successful on the pitch. Let me warn you that in order to be successful, you must display the necessary level of commitment. You must prepare to work hard at all times. To become a success story, you must have the urge and that desire to succeed. You have in it in you to become successful. Basically, what I'm saying is that success will not come without hard work. From today, develop a mind and an attitude that will help you in your quest to improve your game. The onus is on you to put in the extra that is required. Here are some of the awards. The most outstanding goalkeeper award went to Mr. Cohen Tuse of Grand Bay who participated in the All-Island League. The award for most outstanding defender went to Mr. Alexis Lowell and the award for the most outstanding midfielder went to Mr. Kimon Joseph. And you can, Alexis, you can collect the one for Kimon. And in court tonight, Inspector Lincoln Corbett appeared before Magistrate Candia George, where he was formally charged with unlawful wounding of Nicholas Roberts. The incident took place on 12 July of 2011 at Bath Estate. According to Corbett, Roberts was caught in the act of making sexual advances on a five-year-old girl at the time. The investigations reveal that Corbett shot Roberts behind his back while he was running. Corbett claimed that Roberts had a rake in his hand and stated, I hitting you with that. The matter was adjourned to the 13th of November, 2012. Full disclosure of documents may be given by the 17th of August, 2012. Albert John Baptiste of Virgin Lane pleaded guilty to malicious damage of a back fender belonging to Ernest Lafond also of Virgin Lane, on August 5, 2012. Mr. LaFon reported the incident to the police, and when Mr. John Baptiste was questioned about the incident, he said, I told the man I would pay him for his part. I can give him a thousand dollars for that or how much he wants. I don't want to go to the cell, please. 
Albert John Baptiste was ordered to pay compensation of $900 to the complainant by 30th September 2012 or two months in prison. In addition, he has to pay $500 by October 31st or spend an additional two months in prison. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights.